We're almost at the end of this ride, most of us know. And so I just want to say, this has been an awesome experience, an awesome opportunity. You know, you kind of want to go through third year pastors and you, you, you sign up. And I couldn't imagine doing this without any other group than the group that we did here. Yeah. I've learned so much from everybody and so many different things from everybody. And so um, just really quick, turn with me to John chapter 13. And we're going to go to verse 6 really quick. And while we're doing that, turn to your neighbor and say, there's a process to being a champion. There's a process, process to being, being a champion. champion. Franklin, you did it. Yes, sir. No. I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> for those of you that weren't there, I heard that Franklin uh, called out from the, from the stage last night. But anyway, so, so John chapter 13, verse 6. It says, Jesus came to Simon Peter, who, or he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize how now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And so I want to I want to give you guys a, a really quick quote. You know, it's the process of a champion. Mike Tyson has a quote that said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> and so often we don't understand why certain pieces in our lives don't make sense. Why certain things are just happening everywhere we turn, there's this. Everywhere we turn, there's that. Sometimes things are going to happen, guys. Sometimes life is unfair. But I, I always thought about this, and that is if Jesus had a Judas, if Jesus had troubles, then what makes us think we won't? we got to embrace the process, guys. He will use the things that he did not sin, and he will use the things yeah, that the enemy yeah, meant for harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. To benefit us. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna I wanna talk about how diamonds are made. Spencer kind of hit on it a little bit the other day, but does anybody know how a diamond is made? Pressure. So a diamond is made with extreme heat and extreme pressure. But the awesome thing about a diamond is so when you're a kid, you hear all these stories about if you're bad, you're gonna get a piece of coal in your stocking and <laughs> and Santa's gonna bring you coal in your stocking. Well, the awesome thing is, is a diamond is made out of a piece of coal. Mm -hmm. But it's put through extreme heat. And extreme pressure but if the diamond pulls itself out before the process is finished mm -hmm. it's just a weird looking piece of coal the amazing thing about a diamond is it is the most valuable and precious stone on earth and yet it's got jagged edges nothing on nothing about it. it's evenly symmetrical there's no lines on it that are there's there's flaws in the diamond but yet people saw everywhere to catch a diamond and so the same way that diamonds are made so too are champions and I want to share this, this quote from Rocky. Any of you have ever seen Rocky? There's a line in, in this movie that just really uh, uh, has all... I heard it and I just loved it. It says, no one will hit harder than life itself. It doesn't matter how hard you hit. It's how much you can take and keep fighting. How much you can suffer and keep moving forward. That's how you win. And so I want to share really quick... Um, so in 1974, I think the only person in there that was... was Alive. Maybe there was Steve, but somebody else maybe wasn't. But anyway, George Foreman fought Muhammad Ali and what went down as the rumble in the jungle. And so a lot of us have probably seen the replay. Steve probably saw it live, but the rest of us saw the replay. Um, and so it's it's been called arguably the greatest sporting event of the 20th century. But it was a major upset. Why? Because if anybody knew anything about George Foreman at that time, George Foreman in the four fights leading up to fighting Muhammad Ali, he broke two guys' jaws, he broke one guy's rib, and then the other guy couldn't finish the fight. So he was literally an assassin. Like, he was out there just, I mean, bludgeoning people to death. And so Ali's corner comes to him and says, you're not going to out-punch the champ. There's no way you can do it. Muhammad Ali's like, I got it, I got it. And they're looking at him like, this guy's insane. Like, we've heard him say some crazy stuff, but if he thinks he can punch with the champ, then, then you know, we're, we're going to have to bring this guy out in a body bag. But he knew that Foreman was seven years younger and the strongest heavyweight champion of all time. But Muhammad Ali had a tactic. It was called the rope-a-dope. And so the thing with the rope-a-dope was he would lean against the rope and just Foreman would just hit him as hard as he could. Body shots, body shots, body shots, body shots. And round one would end. And they'd come out and they'd do, 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 do. This went on for seven rounds. And finally, in the, in the eighth round, Foreman hits... Ali with a body shot, and Ali goes, <clears throat> and Foreman goes, or uh, Muhammad Ali goes, is that all you have? And George Foreman's like, yep, that's all I got. And so the moral of that story is that he wore the big man out. And so sometimes the enemy is going to be standing there. 
and he's going to be like George Foreman. And we're going to be like, man, that thing is bigger than I've seen, stronger than I've seen. I can't beat Preach that it. thing. But we have tactics. We have things that we can do. And so the most important people in boxing are not the boxers. It's their corner. And so in our corner, we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Amen. and God. But we also have Pastor Higgins. Mm -hmm. We have all of our instructors. We have all these people. Because if you've ever seen Rocky, I don't know if any of you have ever seen Rocky. But in the first one, when he had to go fight Apollo Creed, he's like, I can't beat him. But Mickey's like, you can beat him. You can. I'll train him. You can beat him. And so I just want to share that there are, just like a, just like a heavyweight fight, each round in life is going to take something out of each round. And so the first round that we, that we have to do is we have to have faith. You see, faith is a lot like boxing. You know, we know Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you have not seen. And how that pertains to boxing is a champion sees the championship before he has it. And a champion has faith that he will, he will win. Faith is going to be a fight. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. And let me ask you guys a question this morning. Have we actually learned to fight? If you are to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we must fight. We're on a course not talking about physical fighting because the Bible does not tell us that we wage war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness, and evilness in high places. But our faith is to be present and to be active. We are to fight against anything that resists what God has said. We have to learn to take our faith and resist every emotion. And, if, and if, when it comes to our destiny and our purpose, we must fight. And so the next round's over. You go to your corner and you're like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. And the men in the corner are saying, round three, round two, get back up. Because throughout a boxing match, you're going to get hit. You're going to fall down. But Rocky Balboa said this. He said, going in one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2. You guys can turn there, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to start reading. It says, But thus, but now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. Although the rivers, they shall not overflow. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall any flame scorch you. So life is going to send us waters. It's going to send us flames. It's going to send us everything. And if there was no trouble, there would be no need for faith. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If every time you went to the bank and you just swiped the card and everything went through, there'd be no need for faith. If every time you went to the doctor and he's like, oh, you're 100% healthy. There's nothing wrong with you. Your kids are doing this. Your marriage is doing this. If everything in life was elevator music, there would be no need for faith. Yeah. So in order for there to be faith, there has to be trials for us to fight with our faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in life, we're going to be knocked down but we never lose unless we stay down. Life is going to knock us down, but we have to answer the bell. We have to shake out the cobwebs. We have to stand up one more time. We have to go in one more round. Yeah. Many of us that have seen boxing have seen those guys, and their eyes are just blurred over. And that guy will take that salt and just stick it under their nose, and they're like, all right. And so round three is keep moving forward. It says, uh, Rocky Balboa has another quote that says, let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you down and keep you on your knees, keep you there permanently if you left it. You, me, or nobody's going to hit as hard as life. But ain't nobody going to hit. But ain't. But it ain't about how hard you get hit. It's about how hard you hit, get hit, and keep moving forward. And so Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 says, Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. And let all your ways be established. And so we have to we have to look at where we're going. We have to keep moving forward. If my hand's here and I'm trying to punch, my hand's going to go where I'm looking. We have to look straight ahead and realize that God is with us. He's got us. And punch the very thing that's in front of us. Because if I'm looking over here trying to punch, he's going he's gonna to get his shots in. We can't look over our shoulder and get where we're going. Winners never retreat. Yeah. And so the next round, guys, is round five. You know, you're sitting there, and you've taken, or round four, you've taken three rounds, and you're like, man, I, this championship ain't even worth it. I'm, my eyes are starting to get swollen shut. My ears, I can't hear. And the man's over there like, know your worth. Know that you're the champion. So now, um, another quote from uh, Rocky Balboa says, now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get 
then go out and get and be what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not point the finger saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or anybody else. Cowards do that. And that ain't you. You're better than that. Psalms chapter, or Psalm, sorry. Where's, okay, he didn't get me. Psalm chapter 139, 13 to 16 says, For you formed my inner parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. And when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they will they all were written, the days fashioned for me, as yet none of as yet there were none of them. And so we were created to be a champion, guys. We were created to do great things. We weren't just created. If we want to just come and sit, uh, a lot of us are buying tickets to watch other people accomplish their destiny. Mm. It is our time to put the gloves on ourselves and get out of the crowd and get into the ring and take what we want from God. Because so many of us are just, oh, I'm in the kingdom. It's great. Wow, look. Frank was doing what God told him to do. Oh, wow. And then they get up and they leave and they come back the next day. Oh, wow. And God, what about me? What about me? He already made us champions. But we have, but he's not going to force us to be a champion. We have to see ourselves as champion and know we're better than what our fear tells us. So we're in round five and your eyes are still getting swollen and you're like, guys, I don't know if I want this title. I, I really don't know if I want this. And you got the... the in Rocky, he had a guy named Mickey. Mickey's like, if you can catch a chicken, you can catch a... This guy was crazy. But he, he's sitting there, and there's a point in, the, in, in one of the Rocky movies where he tells him to push through the pain. So round six is push through the pain. Amen. Um, we're going to have to go through hell. This is what Rocky said. You're going to have to go through hell, worse than any nightmare you've ever dreamed. But when it's over, I know you'll be the one standing. You know what you have to do. Go do it. And so Psalm chapter 27 says, The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my life, or whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come against me to eat my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell through an army. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though, my, though war may rise against me, I am in this I am confident. There's going to be pain in the process, guys. There's going to be pain in the fight. We're going to go through pain, but if we're going to go through pain, we might as well get something out of the pain. Mm -hmm. If we're going to go through, it, we've already fought four rounds, five rounds. Why quit now? Why not just push through the pain to get to where we, you know, a mom doesn't stop pushing just because it hurts. A mom's not like, yeah, leave the baby back in. We'll come in tomorrow and see if it hurts less. She keeps pushing. Why? Because she wants to see her baby. So with us, do you want to see your baby? Are you willing to push? Are you willing to fight? Are you willing to claw and scratch? And so we're in round six. You know, you're still getting beat up. You know, Muhammad Ali's still leaning against that rope, and you're roping open, and mm -hmm. the devil's hitting you with everything he has, and you come back to the thing, and you're like, man, that guy might be right. I don't, I don't think I can do this. I think this thing is bigger than me. I think I, I don't think I can take that guy. And the guys in the corner are telling you to believe that it's possible. Rocky Balboa said, until you start believing in yourself, you ain't going to have a life. In Mark chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, he looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Luke 137 says, for with God nothing will be impossible. Believe in what God said he will do. Believe his word is true. Believe the gifts that he gave you. Believe that if he has sent you in, if you're in that fight, you're not in that fight alone. If he sends you back in another round, that means that there's another round that you can sustain. There's another round that you can take. There's another round. He's not going to send you into anything that you don't know that you can't do. He's not just going to be like, well, I got money on Franklin and say Anybody want to take that bet? And he's sitting in there knowing you're going to lose. No, he's like, this, this guy's a third brain. He's going to go all the way. And so if he's sending you back in, if you're still in the fight, there's a reason why you're still in the fight. And so we're in round seven and you're like, man, you know what? Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I can do this. Maybe, maybe I can. But you have some people in the crowd that are telling you, man, your foreman's going to smoke you. That, that devil's going to beat you. That, that church is too big. That, this is too big. You'll never do that. And so round eight is don't let people tell you. Don't let people who've never been where you're at tell you how to quit. So 
it brings me to the story of Nehemiah because of time I can't read it, but Nehemiah was, was fashioned to build a wall and everybody was coming to him saying, hey, here's a letter, come down, come talk to the king. You're a cupbearer, you can't do this. Hey, do you, do you have any the skills to do this? And what did Nehemiah say? Did he say, oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna... No, he said, I'm involved in a great work and I can't come down. Right. And not only am I not going to come down, I'm going to finish this wall faster and stronger than I was going to do it before. And so Rocky Balboa said this, you know, in, in one of his movies. and said, I stopped thinking the way that other people think a long time ago. you got to think like you're made to, like, you got to think like you've already won. Everybody's telling me I can't win. Maybe the only thing I can do is just take everything he's got. But to beat me, he's going to have to kill me. And to kill me, he's going to have to have the heart to stand in front of me. And to do that, he's got to be willing to die himself. And I don't know if he's ready to do that. And so the enemy is sitting here and he's hitting you in the face. But when you take the fight to him, the word says if you resist the devil, he will free, flee. If you take the fight to the devil, he's a coward. He's going to retreat. Yes. And then he's going to come back and oh, I think I got him this time. So you gotta, you got to stay on the offensive with, with the devil. you got to fight him. Don't let nobody tell you, no, don't let nobody who hasn't been there tell you how to fight. Just take a deep breath. Listen to your corner. The people who are most important in your lives are the ones in the corner, like I shared before. And so we're in round eight. And you're like, man, I, this is 10 rounds. I don't know if I got two more left in me. And the, the corner sitting there telling you, you can do this. You can be the champ. You can do this. And so Rocky Balboa shared, remember that the mind is your best muscle. Big arms can move rocks, but big words can move mountains. So we look at David in, in 1 Samuel chapter 18. And for the sake of time, I don't have time to read that. But when did David kill Goliath? It wasn't when he put the stones in the slingshot. It was when he came to bring his brother's bread. And he's like, what's that guy saying? And they're like, yeah, he said that anybody who beats him, they'll get this and this and this and this. And David's like, I'll kill him. So right there, all these skilled warriors, all these skilled trained assassins that had been assigned to kill Goliath, had already been defeated because they're like, we can't beat this guy. David's like, I'll beat him. And then not only that, he allowed, he didn't allow people to put on him things that he <coughs> couldn't use. Like they were trying to put armor on him. I don't want that. I don't want this. Everybody's going to try to tell you how to fight your fight, but you have to fight your fight the way that you know you can fight your fight. So, so Mark eleven twenty three, 23, as we all know, says, Most assuredly, I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those, those things that he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Henry Ford said this, if you say you can, or you say you can't, you're right. We have to look the devil in the face and tell him what we're going to do to him. We have to let him know that he is a loser. We have to let the devil know that look at your shoes right now, whatever brand your shoes are. Like, my shoes right now are Nike. So when I get up every morning, the devil's like, oh, crap, there's Nike. Because all he ever sees is the bottom of our feet. And so he stays a loser. But he's so stupid, he thinks he has a chance. And we sit there and we let him think that he can beat us. And sometimes he will take us out into the deep water to, uh, to try to beat us. And so the next to last one is do not quit. We're going to have many opportunities in life to quit. But we're going to have more opportunities to quit than we are to succeed. This got all jumbled up, so i got to find. So uh, Rocky Balboa said this. He said, every champion was once a contender who refused to give up. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 to 9 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Yeah. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. The word never said that hard times wouldn't come. The word does say that they will not destroy us. Mm -hmm. The word did not say that the weapon would not form. It just said it would not prosper. Mm -hmm. Every champion must fight. Yep. We will have more opportunities to quit than to stick it out. That's because champions are built in the process of fighting and not in the process of quitting. Are we happy being a contender in life? Are we willing to fight to achieve the destiny? And so the and 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 it brings me to this thing that the motto of the house, we all know it. What does Pastor say? I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. 
That is just as much a part of our DNA as faith is a part of our DNA. Yeah. And so we can't quit. If we have faith, if we have the word, if we have a promise from God, we can't quit. And so it brings me to my last point, and that is uh, round 10, it's finish the fight. Because we can go all the way to the end, but we may not finish the fight. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, uh, verse 24 to 26 says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wealth. But... We are imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as though I'm boxing in the air. So guys, finish the fight. Don't go out there and fight nine rounds and then the last round you're wasting your time. You're shadow boxing. Finish the fight. End it on your terms, not on his terms. We're, we got him on the ropes. Now we have to finish him. Because you've seen so many of those fights where the guy went, he was getting just bludgeoned, 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 and just takes one right hook, one left cross, whatever it takes. So in closing, guys, there will be fights that will be, there will be struggles. But none of, but none of those fights and none of those the struggles define us. We Amen. define them. Amen. We have to lace up our boots. We have to put on our gloves. We have to look everything in the face that is standing in our way. And we have to punch. Why? Because we've been trained by the undefeated, Hallelujah. undisputed, Hallelujah. never been beaten, Amen. still reigning, always Amen. the heavyweight champion of not just this world, Hallelujah. all worlds. And he's given us his ability to go out there in his name and use his power and authority to take what is ours in the kingdom. And so I want to say this very last thing. He said, diamonds are made in the heat and the fire, and so are champions. Go and get what's yours.